Sahashni here and welcome back to my channel. So it is officially my 10th video. <laughs> and yeah, I think as a newbie that is an achievement in itself because you're starting something new, you've now made a long-term commitment and even though you have loads of video ideas, when it comes to filming a video, editing video, it is it is work. It is something that takes time to do and yeah, I'm pretty proud of myself that I've been consistent. I've kept to uploading every Sunday and I've made it from the week up to that day. I've made it to that deadline. So yeah, if you are supporting me on my journey in this platform and you are liking my content and enjoying the videos that I'm making, I would love it if you could subscribe, like and comment. Um, Today, I decided to do something different, something new in celebration of my 10th video. I decided to do a how to build an aesthetic feed or an insight to how I build my poetry aesthetic on Instagram. Okay. So we're getting we're getting up close and personal because building an aesthetic feed is not easy. It takes time, it takes dedication, it takes commitment. And those three things I have really valued in terms of building my own aesthetic feed. I feel as though if you are trying to start out in the social media world or you're trying to build a brand or you're just trying to build a following also on your Instagram page, for example, having an aesthetic feed really is important. And I know a lot of people will say, oh my God, you take social media so seriously. You take Instagram so seriously, like it's just a photo, uploading anything you want. And honestly, that's fair enough. You know, for a lot of people, Instagram, it's just for personal use. You share memories, you know, you share life stones. It's, that's all it is. And that is, you know, good for you guys for having that. And I also have a personal account where I share all of my personal stuff there. But as someone who is now entering the social media game, a newbie content creator, or as a poet in the poetry world, for me, maintaining an aesthetic feed is very important for not only just something that I like to do for fun, but it's also building my own brand in, in the poetry world, like I said, and just another person now on Instagram. So yeah. An aesthetic feed is an important thing for me and I know a lot of other people out there having an aesthetic feed is also very important to them. So as a celebration of my 10th video, I decided to do a video on building an aesthetic feed and just show you ways that I create my own aesthetic feed and how I'm building on that and the apps that I use to help me get a consistent, continual effect if you are interested in that and you are interested in building a brand on social media or starting out an aesthetic feed please keep watching okay so before i kind of get into my steps into building my own feed just wanted to kind of give an insight to my own journey in in finding what suits me I feel as though right at the beginning and i'll try and include yeah i'll include screenshots somewhere around the video where you can see how my feed used to be and my transition. So in the beginning, I really did love the white aesthetic feed. And to be fair, I still do. I literally only kept to white colors, minimal vibe, nothing too crazy. You know, everything had some sort of white background or it was really whitewashed. And that was the kind of theme that I was going on. Then later on, as I grew and my style sort of changed, I became more drawn to um, the neutrals, the beige, the browns, the more edited feel. So then I transitioned into that sort of vibe where every photo had some sort of brown tone or brown shade. My pictures did look somewhat edited. And then Recently, I've kind of come off my brown aesthetic and I have now moved to what's called no edit, edit feed. So this is basically more of a natural feed. You've still got neutral style, neutral tones, but it's more minimal in the colours that you use and maybe more pale and faded. And yeah, that's kind of 
where I am at the moment. I am really happy with the aesthetic feed that I am now building, especially because I have learned to grow and know what I like and what style I like, what I'm drawn to when I look into inspiration and what I feel like it's not for me. So I really had to go through that. So I guess my first tip would be don't feel so hard on yourself when you need to stick to one theme because you're going to grow, you're going to evolve. So the chances are as you are growing yourself, your style is going to change. So your aesthetic feed is going to change. So if you feel like today I'm going to stick with this feed, that doesn't necessarily mean down the line in a year's time, you're still going to have that same feed. You're more likely to change. And I think that first tip that I would give you is allow yourself to change. Don't feel so restricted or hard on yourself if you're not sticking to an aesthetic feed because you really need to play around with what suits you, what editing style suits you, what types of photos you want to film film and shoot and the only way you're going to know that is by experimenting. So if you haven't started building an aesthetic feed, obviously first step is to have the aim that you want to build an aesthetic feed but I would say the first couple of months or even the first year, just experiment with what works for you. So that is my first tip. Tip number two is I would say it overlaps with experimenting, but it is research, taking inspiration. This probably is the most important, I feel, when you're starting out your aesthetic feed or when you're trying to build your brand, because I feel like in the social media world, you really need to do something that's going to make you stand out. And that might be through one of the ways is through your aesthetic feed. So if you try and copy or mimic or really replicate someone else's style, you're not going to be known for being original. You're just going to be known for copying someone else's work. So take inspiration from other people. Look at, you know, top YouTubers, top bloggers, top Instagram social media pages that you are really in love with their style and their aesthetic feed. Take inspiration for that, but don't mimic it. Just see what you like about their pictures and then try to put your own spin on it. Try to bring in your own element, your own niche to it. So then you end up creating a brand new picture, a brand new style, which we're then going to give inspiration for other people who are visiting your page. One of the ways in taking inspiration, and I feel as though everyone knows about this and you don't even need to be a social media personnel to know this is Pinterest. Pinterest really is a game changer. I don't know how we all survived without it, but it is such a good platform because you're able to research and take inspiration in anything and everything. The chances are whatever theme or whatever vibe you're going for or style you're going for, the chances are Pinterest is going to have inspirational pictures that you can filter through, you can really channel your creative energy and you can really gain inspiration from. So I will put some sort of examples here of my own um, boards, mood boards that I have on Pinterest and you're more than welcome to follow me there. So the third step I would say is plan. You really need to plan an aesthetic feed because for something to look nice, it may not just look nice straight away. There may have been certain angles, certain items that have been put into that shot, a certain view that allows an aesthetic to be aesthetically pleasing so that when you do put it on your feed everything is aligned together everything matches and somehow it just flows so one of the ways I plan is I use an app called preview I know there's another app called unum as well or unum or unum so here you basically just have a layout of your Instagram already and what you do is you can upload the photos that you, potential photos you want to upload onto your aesthetic feed. You can just play around with how it's going to work with your already existing feed, if they're going to just match with your current photos, and you can even switch around your photos. Another tip that I want to say, which is also included in the planning phase, is when you do take a photo, specifically if you're out and about or if you're around the house, you need to try and take it so that it already does work with your feed. So for example, the colours on your photo already match to some extent, match with your feed because even though editing really is good, there's so many editing apps out there that are going to help you create the look that you want. 
it's going to be even more difficult for you to edit and do that when you have a photo that's not going to really work with your feed from the beginning. So say for example for me, because I am doing a more neutral, a more minimal, natural aesthetic feed. So if I was to take a photo where the background was pink, but like a really saturated bright pink, that's not necessarily going to go with my neutral style where I look for backgrounds that are white, black, greys, browns. So I'm more likely to already take a photo on a cream background. So when it comes to editing, it's going to just really revamp the photo even more to match my tip number four is the editing stage. So the editing stage really is key. Even the apps that you use, you know, certain apps you just might not really like or are drawn to, you're going to end up having your favourite apps. So the apps that I currently use at the moment is ViscoCam or VSCO Cam. Second app that I use is Lightroom. And the third app that I use, probably everyone knows, is Facetune. So these three apps, I really kind of either rotate around the clock depending on the photo or my most heavily used app would be ViscoCam. There are so many other apps out there. I will try and find, I'll write a list below or maybe on the screen on this video of other apps that I've, you know, dived into before, but obviously I haven't really kept to them. So for you to go check out them as well, because maybe these three apps that I'm using might not really work for you and your style and your editing. So yeah, have a go look at that list and hopefully they will be of use for you. Next part of this video is I'm going to show you how I edit one of my pictures using the apps that I just mentioned. I already am an advocate for aesthetic feed. I feel as though I do have experience now with taking aesthetic feed and building and maintaining one. But recently I did change my own feed. So my editing style is also going to change. Even the pictures that I'm taking or the colors that I'm drawn to have changed. So obviously right now with me, I'm not really going out. I haven't been able to get content or inspiration in the outside world. So I am restricted. It is difficult for me to take photos that match my new feed around the house because the house right now not necessarily matches my color palette. So yeah, I thought me by showing you on how I'm building this feed, from really at home will give you inspiration that yeah you can literally find anything even at the house you don't need to really go out to fancy places you don't really need to explore much but you can really just use the things that you have at home and the backgrounds that you have in your home interiors to make something work for your own aesthetic feed if you are interested in how i edit a specific photo please keep watching okay so now what i'm going to do is just take you through my editing process and how I'm going to match this photo to the current feed that I have. So like I said from the beginning, I'm not sure which step, but I remember I said when you do take photos from the get-go, you already need to plan or have an idea of what sort of style or colours that you're going to use so that it does match your feed already because if this shot was, you know, crazy colours it wouldn't, whether I edit edit the picture or not, it wouldn't really match my feed anyway. So from the get-go, I made sure to use, you know, more of a neutral background, paler tones of colours, nothing crazy. You know, it's quite minimal, the overall vibe. So when I come to editing it, it's just going to be more convenient for me. So now what I'm going to do is let's just heart that because... I've taken loads of photos, but I'm just, I'm decided I'm going to pick this photo. Okay, so the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to whiten the background. So sometimes I will do this for photos, sometimes I won't. It really depends on the actual shot that I've taken. So let's just go for whitening everything and see how it looks. What I'll do is I will do this and then I will just edit the actual photo without whitening the background and see which one I prefer and see which one matches my feed better. But yeah, all you really need to do is just whiten the whole photo like I'm doing here. It's nothing crazy. It's pretty simple and easy to do 
anyone can do it. And obviously it does help if you have neutral tones already in the photo to whiten everything. So now you can see the before and after. And this bar here, what Facetune allows you to do is intensifies the whiten effect. So this was how it was before. And this is it probably partial. And if you wanted to go fully, that would be how it looks. But for me, I'm just going to bring it down to a more neutral base. So I'm going to go for 62. Okay, so I've now just uploaded the photo onto VSCO Cam or Visco Cam. Now I'm just going to show you how I really edit this photo. In all honesty, there really is nothing much I can do with this photo because I'm already actually just happy with it. So I would probably upload this photo already onto my feed because it is natural. Now, normally with my beige kind of feed, I would use M5. That was a pretty popular filter for me. But obviously now I'm going for a more natural look. I'm just going to edit the filter in its original form. So I'm not going to use any of these filters here. So the first thing I straight away do is I play with saturation because I am going for a more neutral, natural effect. I don't want to have a lot of color. So typically I would, you know, range from minus 1.5 onwards to 2. But the thing is, is this photo already is pretty less saturated so I'm just going to bring it down to maybe minus four. So that's the first thing I straight away do is go to saturation. The next step for me that's really key is highlights. So what highlights does is it intensifies the colour you already have but the thing is is when you do have more of a neutral palette it just brings out your neutrals even more which is nice. <laughs> so probably going to play around with it being 4.9 shadows gives a nice faded effect so i'm just going to put that to 0.5 and the next thing i do is clarity and sharpen so sometimes i'll just clarify the image a little bit more so you can see the outlines of you know pages or for example here it's like more of a flat lay so I'm just going to put that to 1.7 and sharpen I will just put it to 0.6 so really if I click on the photo you can just see the before and after so contrast I'm gonna because I've already added a bit of fade with the shadow tool just going to contrast it a bit this is how it looks so this was the before on visco cam and this is the after so all i've done really is i've just changed the exposure to 10 and the contrast so this is how it was before the contrast, I've also brought it up to 10. So with this photo in particular, there's actually nothing much I want to change. I was pretty happy with it in Visco. But just to show you, this is the colour section for Lightroom. And as you can see, you can really play around with the tones so I'm just going to put it to zero because I like to keep it neutral but you can also switch around with the tints too so if all your photos have more of a pinky vibe to it you can just keep adding a pink tone to your photo so all of mine I'm just going to keep to zero at the beginning I said when I whitened the background, obviously I don't do it for all pictures. So this was the picture that I showed you after I 
went on face tuned i whitened it and now went on to visco and then i edited it and then went on to lightroom which you just saw how it looked the final product so now i'm going to go back into visco and just show you the difference between me whiting the background and then deciding not to so i'm going to just quickly go through this editing process so that you can see the difference so the first thing i do is i would go to saturation definitely prefer the tones to this than after I whiten the background so I'm going to just bring it down then I am going to go to highlight shadows I'm just going to add 1.0 to add 0.7 sorry to add a bit of faded effect I'm just going to clarify the edges here a bit more and then exposure I'm just going to bring it down to minus 0.3 so this is how it looked before and this is how it looked after bearing in mind I didn't go into face tune and whiten the background like I did previously okay so we've entered Lightroom again the before and this is the after 